Hey guys, it is Miss Simrino. If you are returning to the channel, welcome back. And if you're brand new, I am so excited that you decided to join me here today for another speed build. And we are in San Myshuno and we're building a bunch of brownstones. And I am really excited to share this one with you guys because I don't believe I've ever built anything like this. I've always wanted to, and there may have been attempts previously, but I've never actually move forward and completed something like this. And this was a heck of an undertaking because I am, I'm basically just in building mode for the new expansion, which is The Sims 4 for rent. I think it comes out December 7th from what everybody was telling me. I could be a little bit off, so please correct me in the comments if I am wrong, but I believe it's December 7th and we are gonna be able to have multiple households on one lot. You could be a landlord, you could be a tenant. There's just, it's gonna be a lot of fun gameplay, I think. And I just love, 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 love the new lot type. I don't remember the exact name of it. Like I don't remember what it's called, but basically you can have a bunch of different households on different lots. So I've been building a lot of things where you could have multiple families or Sims, different households on one lot with different dwellings. And now you can see that the exteriors come together. I did a lot off camera, I'm so sorry, but I had to finagle things. It was so hard. These are four story brownstones, literally four stories. There is a basement, the ground level, the stairs go up to the second level technically, and then there's a third level. And it was so difficult for me to figure out the floor plan in this kind of build because they're very skinny, like they're they're long, they're not, they're not as wide. So trying to floor plan things out was really difficult, but I wanted it to blend in with the city of San Myshuno, and I think it does. I want to say that a lot of the deco buildings look a little bit taller than this one even. There, there might be another floor, but I think this looked balanced with the four stories. And I loved having the basement, which now I only furnish one of these. That's what I've also been doing with a lot of these builds in preparation for the new expansion is I furnish maybe one unit of something. I have another build. I don't know if I'm gonna share it before this one or after this one, but I do have another build where I did the same thing. I did it in Mount Komorebi and I furnished one unit. So I furnished the one with the brown brick in this one and four stories was a lot to furnish. <laughs> Like it was a lot and trying to figure out what rooms should be on what levels was also kind of challenging. So we do start here with the second level, which is where your Sims will enter the home. And this is going to be the living room and the kitchen. Let me also say that the placement of all the staircases, because there are so many staircases, was really, really challenging to work with. And I didn't know what I wanted these to look like whatsoever. I was struggling a lot. I think this is pretty much my first attempt and I do pull back and change things up because it was just, it was not doing it for me. I don't know what it was, but I love these brownstones so much and I can't wait for you all to play in them. I did a little bit of play testing as I always do with my builds and I just loved the vibe. Like it felt like my sim lived in the city properly and that they might have neighbors in these other brownstones, even though I could technically see that there's nothing in those other units. And right now with gameplay, you'd have to probably lock all of those doors if you didn't want Sims going in there for whatever reason. What I also did in all the other units is I laid out all of the bathrooms with the necessary fixtures, appliances, I don't know what they'd technically be called. Like you've got your showers and your toilets and your sinks and all the bathrooms. I had the fireplace in all of the living spaces and then the kitchen. So like the countertops and the appliances in there. So that's how I'm kind of delivering things like this that are intended to be multi-household lots. So if you do download this prior to the expansion coming out, you will be able to possibly use the roommate system. That's something I've been thinking about is even if you did want to play in a lot like this and have other Sims in the other units, granted your Sim would be responsible for all of the bills. I think they get some amount of income from having a roommate, but you could kind of go through the motions and lock all the doors and have your roommates kind of isolated in their own units. It could be something. It's a lot of work, I think, but it could be fun. Anyway, I am decorating the living room and I love love the color scheme I ended up going with. It took me a couple hours to figure out, but we're going with dark blues, mixture of like different wood tones. And then I carried in some of the brick from the exterior of this unit into the interior, just to kind of give it a little bit more of a city 
vibe to it. I wasn't gonna go really industrial with it whatsoever. It's a little bit more contemporary than that, but I really, really liked it. And it made me think of my dear, beautiful best friend, Rachel Ped's one of her builds, it was like a suburban build that she did recently. And she had a mixture of like blue wood tones on the interior. And this rug immediately made me think of that. Oh, it's stunning. And you should go watch that build if you haven't already. <laughs> but anyway, I'm just trying to figure out a layout for this space. Again, it was just very oblong and I didn't know how to fill all the spaces here but I really liked what I ended up with. I loved sizing up that painting from City Living and using the tool mod to make it look like it's leaning against the wall too. That was really nice. And also, I need to call this out because you probably saw it in the thumbnail and you're gonna see it on the interior as well. At the time of me building this, the glitch with the banisters is not or has not, because I don't know by the time you see this if it's going to be remedied or not. But anyway, there's a glitch currently as I record this where if you have at least one wall piece up against a staircase, the banister literally just won't show up. So on the exterior of this build, it looks like the stairs are just open. No banisters, no safety, none of that. Um, and it looks like that on the interior for most of these staircases as well, which was super frustrating to me, but um, it is a current glitch. So it wasn't me just forgetting about the banisters. Just wanna say that now because it could look like that, <laughs> that is not the case. But now we're working on the kitchen and the kitchen is a little bit more of a galley kitchen. I don't know if it's if it technically meets those requirements, but I kind of think it does because we've got countertops on each side. And then we have the dining table smack dab in the center of the room, which I wasn't sure if I was gonna have the room to place. I was kind of thinking, well, maybe I should place the living room downstairs and have the kitchen in the back here and then where the living room is currently, maybe I can make that the dining room and have this big formal dining room right when you walk in. But I really didn't like that. So I chose a smaller dining table here and I got to use these chairs from Get Famous. I had to think about it. These chairs from Get Famous that are kind of these mid-century style chairs. I love them. I don't use them a lot, but then I saw the orange cushion and the dark blue curtains. And I was like, oh my God, wait, this is perfect. <laughs> I love this color combination. And I kind of carried that out through the rest of the build as well. I think there's like an orange accent in the primary bedroom. I thought it was so pretty. I loved it. So hopefully you guys like it too. But I did get this dining table in there with six dining chairs. Granted, I built this for a family of probably three. <laughs> you could of course have more Sims in these brownstones if you want, but I'll kind of explain how a little bit later on. And I did play test this as I always do, and you can access the stove, you can access the dishwasher, your Sims can sit at every single seat. Everything's perfectly functional, which thrilled me because I know that sometimes when you've got a table this close to a lot of the appliances, it could cause a routing issue, but I did not experience any, so hopefully you don't either. And now I'm just cluttering up the kitchen as well, trying to make it look homey and lived in as I always do. Oh, and something else I'll mention too, is I use the exact same flooring wallpapers, countertops, tiles, everything and all of the other units. But what could be really fun is you could use different variations and color combinations in each unit just to kind of spice things up and make them a little bit different. That was something I thought of. I didn't do it myself, but it's something that you could of course do if you wanted to. But the kitchen is pretty much together and now we're moving on to the third floor, technically where the bedrooms are. And there's also two full bathrooms up here with the floor planning and just it being difficult. I wasn't able to get a bathroom on that very first floor, not the ground floor, sorry, the second floor. We're on the third floor now. Yeah, this is really difficult. <laughs> anyway, um, I didn't have any bathrooms downstairs, but there is a bathroom and a utility room on the ground level. And then the basement is just a big open space. But this is going to be the primary bedroom. I colored, I colored, I carried the same color scheme up here into the primary bedroom. I got to use this bed I think this one's from City Living and I don't use it very often, but it has the dark blue comforter on it and I loved it so much. So I carried everything through here. I thought it came out really, really pretty. And it's probably one of my favorite bedrooms that I've done recently. I struggled with some of the decor, but I did put this really big mirror from the Basement Treasures kit in here. And then I carried some of the brick through again from the exterior against this wall, just to kind of give it a little bit more pizzazz, if you will. <laughs> uh, and it helped me kind of balance out, I think the decorations that I put in this room as well, Something I always mention when I'm working with medium wall height, which is what I'm doing right now, <laughs> is that I try to fill every like 
speck of wall space and I don't need to do that. So I just put up one painting. The brick made me feel as though there was enough decoration on this big empty wall. And then I just cluttered up the dresser as well with a few knickknacks and books and plants and I don't know, little like perfume bottles and glasses, you know, all that fun little clutter thing, all those fun little clutter things. I was trying to put a clock above the bed or a wreath or a painting or something. And I think I just put some picture frames, which I I don't do personally, but I've seen a lot of that on Pinterest and I really like it. And then I put an ottoman at the end here. I use this one from Horse Ranch in the bright orange just to carry through that color scheme like I mentioned. I did furnish the bathrooms off camera. They're very plainly decorated, nothing fancy, but again, there's two full bathrooms up here. So in theory, the parents could use one here and then the kid could use the other one. And then this is going to be the kids' room. And I loved it so much. Again, if you have a bigger family, you can maybe get rid of the desk, you could have bunk beds in here. And there's opportunities down on the ground floor to create another bigger bedroom as well. And I can't wait to show you that. But I love this room. I did use oranges and blues and varying colors and black because I thought that this kid was really into sports. Maybe that's kind of like their primary interest. Kids have typically a ton of different interests. They like a ton of different things. So you don't have to stick with that, but I did use that bedspread that had the baseballs on it and I've got some sports clutter and things too. And it has a lot in here. Like there's a lot to do in this, this space. So I did also test this. You'll see when there's all of this clutter on the ground, my sim was able to use the dresser. They were able to access the bed. They were able to, did I test the void critter thing? Cause I, I add a void critter table game machine thing in here, whatever. They were able to watch the TV. They were able to use this mirror, turn on music. Like everything was functional, which was really, really great. I was a little bit worried about that. I think they may have had difficulty accessing the bookshelf that I ended up putting in here, but there are other bookshelves in here that you could absolutely access and you could just move one or two things to be able to access those things as well. Um, but there's just a ton of clutter. I love it so much. I had also kind of a subtle I'm, I don't even know if I can say it's a theme, but maybe like a subtle hint to them enjoying space and things like that too. Again, kids love a ton of different things. So we've got like this space rug and then the pillow as well from the, oh, what is that called? That kit, little campers kit. I had to think about it for a second. There's also that bookshelf, like I mentioned, we've got a faux hamper. Now I do add a utility room with a functional washer and dryer. So you may want to replace any faux dressers or any faux wardrobe, oh my God, I can't talk, any faux hampers <laughs> with actual hampers if you do have laundry day, if you want that to be functional. Otherwise there will be clothes piles all over the place. Um, something I thought of afterwards, cause I was just kind of going with the flow here, but really love that kid's room. And now we're on the ground floor. So you do have to go downstairs from the entrance to get to the ground floor. And I just made this a family room. We've got the standing piano, we have another couch. I think, I think that's, I think there's a couple bookcases too. I was gonna put another fireplace, but I ended up not doing that. There's a kid's creativity table down here. And I think there's a record player so they could like listen to music or someone could be playing the piano. The kid could be drawing at their creativity table and the parents are just kind of hanging out. I was thinking of adding some more kid items, like the little like puppet station thing that you saw and then that play tent, but they're just so big. They're so big and they just did not fit the space the way I wanted them to. So I did decide against them, but I still really like the space. And this is what I was talking about. You could get rid of this entire room and you could make it another bedroom if you wanted to. I was thinking of making it like a guest room or maybe a teen room, something like that. And actually the basement, if you wanted to split that up and make like, a teen bedroom and then basement hangout. That could be so cool. I just didn't do it personally because it wasn't the family that I was imagining living here, but that could be super cool with all that basement treasures kit stuff. I think that would be great. It got me really excited when I thought about it. And maybe if I furnish the other units in the future, I'll make one of those. Cause I think that's a cool idea personally. I, I had to toot my own horn. I think that's a pretty cool idea, but I am just adding some. <laughs> I don't know what I'm on today. Um, I'm just adding some decorations on top of the standing piano. I also, again, brought some brick into this room just to kind of give it a little bit more decoration. And then I have some empty picture frames here. I was gonna add a dollhouse, became too cluttered, but I had a basket of like pillows and stuff that kind of sort of don't match everything else. Hence why this is the family room, you know, the informal family room instead of the living room. 
And then I add the record player on top of this side table as well, which this record player, I keep forgetting we have it, but I love it so, so much. So I have to keep remembering that it exists because I continue to forget that we have that in game. And now this is going to be the utility room. So there is a washer and dryer, like I mentioned, there is a sink. I'm gonna call it a utility sink, but it's really just a plain sink in the countertop. And then I've got a vacuum, well, two vacuums. We've got the stand-up vacuum and then we have the hand vacuum because again, I always forget that those exist too. Don't know why I always forget, but I do. Um, and then we've got, what else do we have? Just a bunch of like decorations and stuff pretty much from laundry day, just to make it look like a utility room. Just adding some clutter. I think I have technically a wardrobe down here, not this one from Get Famous. I get rid of that one, but I add this hanging shelf, I think in the middle here and then add some clothing. So technically that is a wardrobe. If your Sims wanted to change quickly before going out the back door to their back garden, you could do that because there is a backyard space for every single unit as well, just separated by fencing and stuff like that. I didn't decorate it like crazy. I was trying to think of an elaborate setup for the backyard, but I ended up not going that route. I think I just added a couple of things back there, which you will see in just a few moments. But I did like the utility room. I think it is a lot of decoration aside from the washer and dryer, but it was a nice addition. So again, every single unit does have that bigger utility room to be able to use. There's no like shared laundry space, which let me tell you, I had to do that when I lived in Florida and it was really difficult. <laughs> it was really difficult to manage. Um, I also lived in a really not great apartment complex and they were just glass sliding doors open to the laundry, which were always kept always kept open for some reason. And like little spiders and lizards and dinosaurs would get in there and everything was grimy and awful. And I did not like it at all. I, <laughs> I hated it. Anyway, this is the back garden. There's a grill outside dining. And then I put a basketball hoop for the kiddo. And that's pretty much it for this build. I hope you all enjoyed this. I cannot wait to hear your thoughts and I will catch you next time I post a video and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Talk all night, and we just let the good times pass. And got